I saw a guy that did a video. He uh, took his completely apart, his quad completely apart, and he lined the whole bottom of it, the whole bottom, this area down in here, from the inside. It was a lot of work because there's a lot of screws in this thing. Uh, I lined it in there. Uh, the problem is because the uh, when you uh, when you turn your GoPro on, it uh, and start recording. When it's on, it doesn't matter. When you start recording, it generates a signal that interferes with your GPS. That's why I've crashed it like three or four times. Now, since the thing that he did, I did the same thing he did, and it didn't work for me. Uh, what I did was I tried uh, I tried wrapping it in uh, tin foil, and honest to God, that worked. I was able to fly with my camera running, and I didn't I didn't lose GPS lock. I wanted to find some good way to do this, you know, that I could share, that uh, should work for everyone, and it's not as much trouble as taking this thing apart, which didn't work anyway. So what I did was, uh, like I said, I tested it wrapping it in aluminum foil. A lot of people are using copper now. The blade people are aware of the problem and they're packaging their new units with copper tape. Now you can see I've got, uh, let me get this out of the way. Uh, it's a uh, foil tape, it's just aluminum foil tape, but this is thicker than tin foil, and it's better than tin foil. You don't have to wrap the front of the camera. Now I saw this uh, on one of the blade videos. They're packing it with the copper tape, and all they do is they they literally tape their camera all the sides in the back because the back of it is what's facing the the controls and the GPS and everything in the uh, and uh, quadcopter. So what I did was I cut me some of this. Some of this stuff right here, and I made me a little thing to fit the camera. As you can see, I even cut out a little hole so the button works better. This fits inside the camera case. I made uh, little sides on it that I, I cut little strips where I stuck it together. Now this is this is some extra shielding that I've done, but I will show you the camera case and what I did with it. I put one one piece on the on the back of this covered it I went inside and I covered the top sides and bottom uh, if you can see top sides and bottom are all now uh, with uh, the sticky aluminum foil I went on the outside and I went around the edges for the top and size, but I didn't mess with the bottom. It wasn't necessary. Uh, I've tested this, just the case and the camera, without this other piece, and it works just fine. But I add this extra piece just for extra insurance because I sure don't want to lose my quadcopter. I can't afford to buy another, and if I tear it up. So what you can do, like I say, if if you line your case like that, this is my waterproof case. Put your camera in there, close it up this foil will shield your uh, GPS in your uh, quadcopter. What I do, now I've tested it that way and it works fine, but with this, like this, you can cover it. That gives you an extra measure of shielding. Then you just drop it in the box. It should go right in there if you've done everything right. I say it should go in there feels like it's hitting something. No, it's it's all right. You get that in there, then then you're double shielded. Should just be able to snap it right together and put it on there and you're ready to go. See? No problem. But I thought I'd show you that and uh, I've done numerous flights with this and I don't have any trouble at all. That solved my problem. Maybe it'll solve yours. <clears throat> okay, this is a short segment on uh, I've been testing batteries uh, I've been doing high altitude um, video you see I got a battery in here right now that's uh, just like this this is an uh, e-flight 11.1 uh, volt 2200 milliamp hour that tells you what the power is on the battery now this 30c I don't understand all that yet 
But that has something to do with how much power this thing can put out in a burst. Is the way I understand it. I've just been reading on the website. Uh, several things you need to know. I've, I've seen people uh, on the videos, they're running out and buying these white batteries. And I'm going to tell you right now, the 2200 on this one and the 2200 on this one are completely different. They said this would run as long as this one, and it won't. This is a four minute battery right here. It runs consistently at four minutes carrying a GoPro on this copter. This one will run consistently for six minutes. So when you're running out thinking you're getting a good deal, remember you're getting what you pay for, usually. This is no low, is low dollars, but it's low power output. 2200 is not the same. Now, here's another thing. This battery is a 2700, so it says it's a 25C and I was told that it would run the copter long, uh, up to 15 minutes. That it would run longer than this battery. You look at the physical size and everything. It is larger, it's heavier. You'd look at it and think, oh yeah, it should be more powerful. It's a Thunder Power battery. This is an E-Flight battery. The truth is, this runs for 5 minutes and 50 seconds before the warning light comes on. So it runs 10 seconds less than this one before the warning light starts flashing. Beyond that I haven't uh, yet tested it to see how long it will run with the warning light flashing. So I wanted to give that uh, for some information and um, then I'm going to make a video on some high altitude flights that I've been doing around here and show you the scenery.